I recently read this book, The Mountain and the Sea. It's about artificial intelligence and sentient octopuses, octopus, octopi. Anyways, there's a character who can comprehend entire neural networks using nothing but his brain. He understands how every parameter works together to make decisions. And he uses this ability to hack into AI systems. Unfortunately, in the real world, it's not this easy. We me mortals need help. We may need to use multiple methods, and even then, we may not have a complete understanding of how our models work. In short, interpreting models is hard work. This video aims to convince you that the results of this work are worth it. Hi, I'm Connor, and welcome to ADO. Today, we'll be discussing the benefits of explainable AI. The core benefit is the aim of XAI, an understanding of a model. This can be fascinating in its own right, but many other benefits also follow. It can help us decrease harm and increase trust in machine learning. You can also gain knowledge of your data set and tell better stories about your results. You can even improve accuracy and performance in production. We'll discuss these six benefits in depth. We then end by touching on the limitations of XAI. Before we start, a quick reminder that there are two broad categories of approaches in XAI. We can try to build models that are intrinsically interpretable. These are models like linear regressions or decision trees. We can also use methods to interpret more complex black box models. In this case, it is common to use what are called model agnostic methods. These methods can be applied to any model after it has been trained. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course with shifting public sentiment and movements to regulate AI, like the EU AI Act, factors in machine learning like interpretability, safety, fairness, and transparency will become more important in the future. The course gives you the tools to help stay ahead of this trend. Okay, so without model agnostic methods, we can face a trade-off. Option one is to use an accurate black box model that we do not understand. Option two would be to build a less accurate model that is intrinsically interpretable. This trade-off could occur when simple models cannot adequately solve a problem, but clear explanations are still required for business or legal reasons. Thankfully, with methods like SHAP, LINE, or PDPs, we can go with option one and still provide these explanations. In other words, through increased flexibility in model choice, XAI can improve accuracy. Better understanding of predictions can also directly improve accuracy. By interpreting a model, we can understand why it is making incorrect predictions. Using this knowledge, we can make adjustments that improve accuracy. For example, through better data collection or building better features. When you talk about accuracy, we usually mean performance on the training or validation data set used to develop the model. This is not the same as the accuracy on new data in production. Bias in the training data can lead to unforeseen issues. XAI can help us identify these issues and build more robust models. An example comes from a model used to power an automated car. It makes predictions used to turn the car left or right based on images of a track. The model performed well on both the training and validation set. The car even worked well when we tested it on the actual track. Yet, when we moved to a new room, it went horribly wrong. These shaft plots can help us understand why. Notice that the pixels in the background have high shaft values. This means that the model is using background information to make predictions. The reason is that it was trained on data from only one room. And so the same objects and background are present in all the images. As a result, the model associates these with left and right turns. When we move to a new location, the background changes and our predictions become unreliable. The point is that models only care about associations. This means that they can make correct predictions for the wrong reasons. Like with the car, bias can creep into our training data in many unexpected ways. 
By only evaluating models on training data, we can miss when this happens. In this way, XAI allows us to debug our models before we put them into production. Debugging is not only about making predictions correctly. It is also means ensuring that they are made ethically. Scott Langberg, the creator of SHAP, discusses an example in this presentation. I'll link to it in the description. Using SHAP, he interprets a model used to predict credit default. He shows that the model is using months of credit history to make predictions where a longer history is associated with a higher risk of default. The problem is that this feature is a proxy for age which is a protected variable. A proxy variable is a model feature that serves in the place of another feature. When understanding why this is a problem, we need to consider two layers of proxy variables. Firstly, in credit risk, it is true that older customers can pose a higher risk. This can be due to lower income in retirement, health concerns, or low technological adoption. Age is a proxy for these other factors, but importantly, Age does not directly impact credit risk. It would be unethical to discriminate against all older customers. So why not simply exclude age from your model? We must consider the second layer of proxy variables, those that stand in the place of age. Older customers will tend to have been with the bank longer. Through discriminating against customers with a longer credit history, we are indirectly discriminating against older customers. In fact, a longer credit history is generally a sign of lower credit risk. The model has flipped this relationship around to capture the risks associated with older customers. If we blindly trust black box models, these types of problems will go unnoticed. By uncovering the relationship captured by a model, we can think more critically about them. We can make judgments about whether decisions based on the model predictions will be ethical and correct them accordingly. The goal is really to decrease any potential harm caused by an AI system. This is one way in which we can build trust in those systems. Machine learning is everywhere. It is improving or replacing processes in finance, law, or even farming. Yet, you would not expect your average farmer or lawyer to have an understanding of neural networks. Their black box nature, could make it more difficult for them to accept predictions. Even in more technical fields, there can be mistrust of deep learning methods. XAI can be a bridge between computer science and other industries or scientific fields. It allows you to relate the trends captured by a model to the domain knowledge of professionals. We can go from explaining how correct the model is to why it is correct. If these reasons are more consistent with their experience, a professional will be more likely to accept the model results. An example comes from my research. The paper is not out yet, but we will introduce the Landsat Irish Coastal Segmentation Datasets, or LIX dataset for short. This is the first dataset created for deep learning semantic segmentation of the Irish coastline. We can see example from the LIX test set. We have the RGB visualization of the spectral bands used as input, the ground truth mask where each pixel has been classified as land or ocean, and the predictions for two segmentation approaches. We benchmark this data set using deep learning methods like UNET and more traditional spectral indices. Keep in mind that remote sensing models have access to other spectral bands besides your standard RGB channels. For example, the near infrared or NIR band. We wanted to understand which bands the deep learning model was actually using to make predictions. To do this, we used a permutation feature importance approach. The permutation score for each band is the original model accuracy, less the accuracy when the band is permuted. Larger values suggest that the band was important to the model's prediction. We can see that only the NIR and WSIR1 bands are used to make predictions. This is an interesting result. Both of these bands are used in spectral indices for water body extraction. In particular, the NIR band is well known to be useful for this task. So with this interpretation, we could relate our model results to years of more traditional remote sensing research. Another way XAI can build trust is with customers. We can explain why you were denied a loan 
or why a product recommendation was made. Users will be more likely to accept these decisions if they are given a reason. We can give these reasons by relating model results to a customer's personal experience. However, the technical level of any explanation will differ from when we communicate with professionals. As we will discuss in a later video, XAI will provide the basis for human-friendly explanations in these cases. The previous two benefits have been about building trust. The trust of the public, customers, and professionals. You may still need to build trust, even in environments where machine learning is readily adopted. This is to convince your colleagues, manager, or even yourself that a model will do its job. Data scientists do this through data storytelling. Data storytelling involves explaining the results of an analysis or model to less technical colleagues. We try to do this in a way that doesn't bore them to death. The goal is to convince them that decisions made based on model predictions will be correct. Sometimes we even have to sell an analytical solution. XAI can help with this by providing a link between data exploration and model results. Take the scatter plot, the price of a second-hand car versus their age. The red dots are normal cars and the blue dots are classic cars. As expected, the price of normal cars decrease as they age. However, the price of classic cars is more stable or potentially even increases. The relationship between age and price depends on the car's type. In other words, there's an interaction between car type and car age. Now, take this ice plot. We discuss how it's created in a future video. For now, know that it comes from a model used to predict price from a set of features, including car age and car type. Clearly, the model captures the interaction between these features. As a bonus, like many XAI plots, the ice plot is eye-catching. This can help with those short attention spans. So, with XAI, we can go from saying, we think the model is using this relationship we observed in the data, to look, see, the model is using this relationship. In turn, our colleagues can validate these relationships. If they are consistent with their experience, then they will trust the model to be put into production. If not, well, we may have discovered something completely new about our data. Black box models like random forests, XGBoost, and neural networks are good at finding patterns in our data. We can automatically model nonlinear relationships and use these to make predictions. Through exploring these predictions, we can find these relationships. In some cases, this can generate new knowledge about the underlying data set. In this way, XAI helps machine learning become a tool for data exploration and knowledge generation. This knowledge can inform feature engineering for linear models. Specifically, we can model nonlinear relationships with regression by reformulating them as linear relationships. These new features can drastically improve the accuracy of linear models. This is kind of the inverse approach to addressing the trade-off we mentioned at the start of this video. That is, we can use interpretations of black box models to improve the accuracy of intrinsically interpretable models. But the real power of this knowledge comes when we look beyond models. Model predictions do not exist in isolation. They exist within an organization where the most important decisions are made by humans. New knowledge about customers or the business can help inform those decisions. Who knows, after uncovering the interaction above, we may decide to invest in some classic cars. With all these benefits, XAI still has its limitations. We need to consider these when coming to conclusions using the methods. All model agnostic methods will have their own technical limitations. Most of these are around feature dependencies, also known as multi-collinearity. The assumption of independent features is not true. The methods can be unreliable. Another limitation is that the methods can be abused. It is up to us to interpret results and we can force stories onto the analysis. We can do this unconsciously as a result of confirmation bias. It can also be done maliciously to support a conclusion that will benefit someone. This is similar to p-hacking. We torture the data until it gives us the result we want. If you want to understand the limitation of one method in particular, SHAP, then check out this video. Otherwise, you can find loads more XAI content in this playlist.
Also, remember you can get access to my XAI course for free.